Hello everyone. Welcome to Neo IES Daily Current Affairs program. Today on 21st November 2018, we will be dealing with the topics basic nations, then a topic from international relations that is India Russia bilateral relation, uh, then invasive species Next one is prompt corrective action, economic capital framework. For the map session, we will be dealing with Pangongso Lake and last we have PQRS. Coming to the very first topic that is basic nation. This was in news because the basic nation, uh, they would continue to push the developed countries on their early commitment to provide $100 billion annually from 2020. More about the news that is... Uh, the COP24 uh, that will be held uh, soon in December 2018 and the meeting will be held in Katowice that is in Poland. It is the COP24 uh, to the UNFCCC and the parties uh, they will try to agree on a rule book that will specify how countries will agree to take forward the commitments which was taken during the COP21 which was held in Paris. So, the Paris Climate Change Agreement, uh, the main objective of that uh, COP was uh, they will take steps uh, to limit the global warming to 2 degrees Celsius below the pre-industrial levels and as far as possible limit it to 1.5 degrees Celsius before the end of the century. Uh, that is the Paris Climate Change Agreement and uh, you might be knowing that and we will deal with that. Before that, uh, just uh, brief about the basic nation uh, basic it is actually a grouping of countries uh, basic countries and it is uh, it includes uh, four newly industrialized countries that is brazil south africa india china these are the four countries which are included in basic uh, it is brics minus russia uh, and this was formed by an agreement uh, in 2009 and they, their major objective like it is to work uh, for the climate change and then the like these four countries committed to act jointly at the Copenhagen Climate Summit. Copenhagen Climate Summit is the, uh, is the 15th COP to the UNFCCC uh, which took place at Copenhagen that is in Denmark. Copenhagen Climate uh, Summit was the 15th COP to the UNFCCC. Do remember that. Uh, so, uh, that uh, paved way for the formation of basic nation. Uh, then, talking about Paris Agreement on Climate Change, uh, that was the 21st COP, that is Conference of Parties uh, to the UNFCCC, which was held in pa Paris. And the main objective of Paris Agreement, as I already told, it is like uh, to keep the global temperature rise uh, below 2 degrees Celsius by 2100 above pre-industrial levels with an ideal target of keeping temperature rise below 1.5 degrees Celsius. This um, empowers countries to determine how to cut their emissions and do remember that uh, Paris Climate Change Agreement it is not legally binding. This agreement is not legally binding. So, a uh, Paris Agreement uh, officially entered into force after 55 parties to the convention accounting for the least 55 percentage of total greenhouse gas emissions ratified it. It was then the Paris Agreement was officially entered into force and each country they, uh, they will have uh, the, their own uh, country wise target or their own individual target. Uh, th their own nation's target. So, India has uh, their own INDC target. INDC stands for Indented Nationally Determined Contribution. Each country will work towards uh, reducing their greenhouse gas emissions. So, the INDC target of India says that uh, they will uh, reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 level. Please do remember this, uh, like uh, you can uh, write uh, these things in your main answers also. Uh, it is to reduce the emission intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from its 2005 level. Also, uh, to achieve about 40 percent uh, cumulative electric power installed capacity from non-fossil fuel based energy resources by 2030. 
and also uh, it is it will be with the help of transfer of technology and low cost international finance including from the green climate fund this are the indc target that's about the topic our next topic it is the india russia bilateral relation and uh, the news uh, is that india signed a 500 million dollar deal with russia to locally manufacture two stealth brigades with technology transfer so uh, the agreement was signed between goa shipyard limited gsl and uh, russia's roso boron export so this was the, uh, the agreement was signed and the deal is for material design specialist assistance from russia for the two ships and uh, in october 2016 india and russia uh, they have signed an intergovernmental agreement for four krivak or talwar stealth brigades so this krivak uh, class was a series of brigades or god ships okay it is uh, god ships and uh, two will be procured directly from russia and two will be built by the goa shipyard limited defense acquisition council already uh, approved for this deal and also the cabinet committee on security they have also cleared this deal uh, india uh, they had uh, india had already procured six brigades of the same class in two different uh, batches uh, which is the talwar class and the upgraded tech class that's about the news now talking about the invasive species so uh, scientists says that flood and uh, landslip which was uh, uh, caused in uh, caused in kerala uh, so that, that have an unleashed several alien invasive species of plants into the state's water bodies and uh, this will be a major threat to the native biodiversity and the aquatic environment talking about uh, invasive species uh, according to the cbd definition that is convention on biodiversity as per their uh, definition invasive species are those that is established outside of its natural past or present distribution whose introduction will be a threat to uh, biological diversity that is the definition of invasive species it is nothing but the introduction of any invasive species will be a threat to the native biological diversity so this invasive species uh, they are a major driver of biodiversity loss and it is considered as the second most common threat associated with species that have gone completely extinct uh, the different ways in which species are transported from one place to another that is called as pathways okay the different ways in which the species are transported to one place from another that is known as uh, pathways so some of the common pathways are uh, the release of fish for fisheries into the wild then escape from farms and horticulture then with uh, ship ballast water these are the common pathways now uh, as an add on to this we will uh, deal with our uh, he target so this convention on biological diversity uh, this uh, when you are studying this uh, you will be uh, you might have gone through this nagaya protocol then cartagena protocol if you have not studied uh, please do read it it is very important when you study the cbd uh, those are the two uh, protocols and he target also can uh, come under this uh, a uh, convention on uh, biological diversity uh, strategic plan it is a strategic plan for biodiversity uh, it has 20 major uh, targets and uh, the target number 9 uh, of ig target it is specifically related to invasive alien species the target number 9 of ig then uh, global invasive species database it is uh, it is actually a free online searchable source of information about alien and invasive species that negatively impact the biodiversity it is the free online searchable source of information which deals with the alien and invasive species that negatively impacts the biodiversity so it uh, the major aim of this uh, database it is to 
provide uh, public awareness about the invasive species and to facilitate the uh, prevention of their biodiversity. Similar one is like um, it is the global register of introduced and invasive species. So this combines a country-wise data of introduced and invasive species. Our next topic is prompt corrective action and economic capital framework. So from the recent like uh, two, three uh, weeks itself, you are all these very news. Uh, you might have already gone through this news uh, news channel and you know that uh, in the recent times there was a tussle between RBI and uh, the central government. Uh, this particular thing came into uh, light because the RBI and government have agreed on terms after their recent meeting. So, talking about prompt corrective action framework, that is PCA framework, it is actually a supervisory control, a supervisory tool of RBI, which involves monitoring of certain performance uh, of banks to check their uh, financial health as an, it is like uh, considered as an early warning exercise and it will ensure that uh, the bank don't fail. So this is a supervisory control of RBA. Like there are uh, many control uh, of RBA over the banks like quantitative tools uh, similar, th uh, similar, this is a similar tool like which is a supervisory tool which is known as prompt corrective action according to latest PCA framework they will be assessed and uh, it is based on three parameters like uh, capital ratios, asset quality and profitability. So based on these three indicators, uh, the banks will be assessed. And uh, the indicators to be tracked for those three parameters are CRAR that is capital to risk weighted asset ratio, then net NPA. The NPS non-performing asset and uh, return return on asset respectively. So, uh, based on these three indicators or the which one are the one the three parameters that will be assessed based on the CRAR and uh, CRAR NPA and the return on asset based on these three respectively the indicators will be uh, the three parameters will be calculated and based on that the uh, banks will be assessed. So RBI has placed uh, 11 public sector banks out of 21 state owned banks under its prompt corrective action framework because of those banks deteriorating performances and uh, talking about economic capital framework. So before that what is economic capital? So economic capital, it is the amount of capital that a bank or other financial service need to ensure that the company does not fail even if it is under any possible risk. So this is to uh, ensure that a company does not fail, okay, like any a bank or any other financial institution. So economic capital is calculated internally and the amount of capital that the firm should have to support any risk that it takes. So what is this economic capital framework of RBI? So this is a tool of RBI using which it decides how much reserves it has to keep so as to ensure that it sustains the risk it takes. So uh, if this, uh, if this uh, so much reserve is there, it can overcome any possible risk in the future. Uh, this is to ensure that banks don't fail during any econo possible economic crisis. Another thing is the board for financial supervision. So it is a committee constituted uh, to undertake the consolidated supervision of the financial sector which comprise the commercial banks, financial institution and also the NBFC that is non-banking financial companies. Um, uh, please go through no uh, NBFCs. Um, in detail, uh, they have uh, they, they are in news uh, because of the INFS crisis also. So please go through NBFCs also. So the, talking about this uh, board, it is a committee of uh, including the commercial banks, financial institution, and the uh, NBFCs. Uh, the members of this uh, committee are uh, like it is chaired by RBA governor and who will be supported by uh, four directors as members for a two-year term and one of the deputy governor 
of the RBI serves as the vice chairman. Talking about the capital adequacy ratio, it is a ratio in which like a, it measures a bank's capital in relation to its risk weighted assets. Cap, uh, all these are basic economic concept uh, topics. Uh, make sure that you know these all these basic economic concepts. Coming to map aided program, uh, today we will be dealing with the Pangong So Lake. Uh, so this lake uh, it is uh, in Jammu and Kashmir. You can see in the in the map and so as I said it is situated in Jammu and Kashmir about a height of 4350 meter in the Himalayas and it extends from India to China. So which means it, it is a dispute it is in a disputed territory and it is in the Sino Indian line of actual control and that passes through this lake. So one third of water body is in Indian control and the rest is with the Chinese control. Uh, the speciality of this lake is that uh, during winter the lake freezes completely despite being uh, saline water. So this is a saline water lake and it freezes completely during the winter season. Uh, so also note that it is not a part of the Indus river basin and it is geographically a separate landlocked river basin. Okay, It is not a part of Indus river basin. Uh, one other lake in Jammu and Kashmir, it is the Somorori and uh, Somorori is uh, in the lake uh, in the Ladakh region, uh, a part of the Changtang Plateau in Jammu and Kashmir and uh, the lake and the surrounding area are protected as the Somorori Wetland Conservation Reserve. That's about Somorori and coming to PQRS that is previous question revision series, the question is what is the role of ultraviolet radiation in the water purification system? Statement 1 is it inactivates or kills the harmful microorganisms in water. Statement 2 is it removes all the undesirable odor from the water. Statement 3 is it quickens the sedimentation of solid particles, removes turbidity and improves the clarity of water. So these are the options. So before that, please go through the op all the options once again. Uh, see uh, how ca how you can eliminate or how you analyze all these statements. So read statement two. It removes all the undesirable odor from the water. Do you think it is possible? You might uh, have a water purification system in your home, right? So. Uh, from that will it uh, remove this uh, like this ultraviolet will it remove all the uh, all the undesirable smells from the water will it be possible no right then it quickens the sedimentation of solid particles removes turbidity and improves the clarity of water will the ultraviolet radiation in water purification system like uh, just think that if, if if you have a water purification system and uh, if it is uh, like a muddy water, it can only filter, uh, will it process and uh, give you a very transparent or clear, crystal clear water, will, be, will it be possible? No, right? It cannot remove the turbidity and it will improve the clarity of water. It can only kill or it can kill, in, kill or inactivate the harmful microorganisms. So, before that, we will we'll see what is this ultraviolet radiation. It is an electromagnetic radiation with a wavelength from about uh, 10 nanometer to 400 nanometer, which is shorter than that of visible light, but it is longer than X rays. Okay, uh, wavelength it is less than visible light, but longer than X rays. UV radiation is present in sunlight and it uh, constitutes about 10 percentage of the total light output of the sun. So this ultraviolet rays, it penetrate the harmful pathogens in your like homes, water and uh, destroy the illness causing microorganism by attacking their genetic core. So it will kill the microorganism by attacking their genetic material. Okay, that is the DNA. So which means the statement one is correct. So, uh, this is uh, extremely efficient in eliminating their uh, 
eliminating their ability to reproduce like the microorganisms ability to reproduce and this will disinfect your water with ultraviolet light uh, with ultraviolet light and it is exceptionally simple effective and environmentally safe but uh, like uh, uv itself uh, it is not enough to purify water down to drinking water purpose so this is because the uv radiation is only effective for treating bacteria and virus so this uv does not eliminate the contaminants such as chlorine then heavy metals uh, like also the volatile organic compounds all these contaminants are not eliminated uh, with the uv radiation it can only effective for treating the bacteria and the virus inside the virus in the water so uh, this is the only purpose of uv radiation so uh, with that you can uh, narrow down to the uh, option that is a one only that is the correct statement uh, it can only kill the microorganisms it cannot uh, remove all the undesirable odor or it is not possible so the statement one is correct uh, that's all for today and uh, you can download the daily current affairs material from the link given below. Thank you for watching.